You know what? I could totally see why Powell could look past the Decepticon title and see these people as friends. Especially when your face is the Crypt Keeper with makeup. Jesse, I mean Shatter, was one of the main antagonistic Decepticons who hunted down our title character in the 2018 film Bumblebee. Paired with Dropkick, she was cold, cunning, and as her alliance suggests, deceiving. Despite never uttering her name in the entire film and being a whole new character in the franchise, Shatter already became favorable to those hungry for intimidating Decepticons with thought and meme lords who call her queen. Shatter in this toy transforms into the Harrier Jet. And I know there's a few people out there who would prefer a triple changer, even going so far to say Hasbro only made two figures over a triple changer to get more money out of it. But that might not be the exact case. Aside from the fact that a company is meant to develop a product and keep on track to ensure money is received, there's many reasons to see why they split her between two toys. Budget, design, and the fact this isn't Springer with matching chunks being used in both modes. I know, a third party figure is in the works, but for a deluxe, it would be an engineering nightmare at the scale. Considering a muscle car is very different to a jet, it's like making a fridge out of a crock pot. And before you say tracks, it's car with wings. After the problematic and inaccurate form of the muscle car deluxe toy, the idea of another mode proved beneficial to give a second chance at her. But it would also have to work around another alt mode, so it was a tad concerning. After having this, those concerns go flush down the toilet. It's so strange because despite the small body of the jet and movie robot form that borders between night and bay, I didn't even write that intending to be a pun, regardless, it's actually pretty clean with a ton of obvious intended jet mode aspects. Sure, there's the legs, but we've seen far worse. Check out the dark color that reduces the red to a few touches. Love the giant intakes on the side and smooth wings with respectful molded details. Even with the clear cockpit, no robot kibble is seen, just a seat for a pilot. Right above it is a panel that is probably just for transformation, but maybe there's some purpose to the jet. Highly sus, I think. I mean, I'm sure someone's gonna correct me, I'm gonna be like, okay. Landing gear on the front folds down, and the back turbines have a joint to turn them down to hover and threaten Charlie. You can plug the guns on the wings, which have complex robot parts, but from the top view, hide under the wings pretty well. You can flip up the nose to reveal animated Blitzwing's helmet. Indeed, a jet with legs. Invisible text. This is a pretty awesome small jet that seems to be a wild surprise. I was really anticipating the robot form only to be completely swept away by an awesome looking jet form. I like the muscle car, but I think this holds better. Robot mode. certainly looks apart from Travis Knight's live-action film and for the most part seems to entirely make up for the poor treatment of the first form. Not to mention, it's based on her form seen through most of the film, as obvious with both forms kibble. Despite the second mode, you can clearly see the headlights and engine of a car forming the bra of this hardcore babe. But there's also a landing gear in the torso, turbines hanging off the shoulders, and wings droop down like some sort of Decepticon General's attire. Knees look like they got vents, perfect for warm weather, and while the basic figure is fine enough, she also comes with a handle for baby hands. Sheesh. I understand a lot is going on, but is this all they could do? At least they got the head right. No more concept face mask probably seen for a split second. Just a proper, darker, sinister face in gunmetal with a red antenna. Now, if only it didn't slip into the body often and hide its neck like a deformed turtle. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, ball joint hips, rotation below, knee bend, and foot moves. <laughs> Posability seems pretty basic for deluxe figures, which is not a bad thing, but what I will say is the hinge in the torso, as well as the junk and head knocking back might become a little frustrating when accidentally slipped out of place. It is though all manageable, and if you like it, it could be useful. Let's take a look at the accessories. She comes with two armed guns with 5mm ports and covers that seem to hide over it. And don't worry about the bottom, the jet kibble actually comes in handy. Now, I know she's a deceiving Decepticon, I thought those were blast ports, but no, they're just lies. I do really dig the jet boosters that fold down on the foot, implying she can fly 
fly even as a robot, even if it's just a fun piece for the toy. And to add to the flying theme, bring up the wings, grab the handle, and now she's in hang glider mode. There's some nitpicks here and there, but it's certainly better than the previous version. I mean, at least the limbs stay on, the details are an improvement, articulation seems better, and with the amount of dark gray, she seems scarier by comparison. I'd say even though she's got too much kibble, probably because she wants to push everyone off the shelf, if you're looking for a definitive Shatter figure that's not an overly gimmick basic toy, I think the choice is very obvious. Unless someone doesn't like the jet form, but even then, it's really well made. You should look into getting this. Evil Windblade is better.